Greetings to dear friends thank you for choosing the Big Dark channel for teaching scientific content. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, and comment to support the channel. Sonar, sound navigation and ranging, is a technique that uses sound propagation, usually underwater, as in submarine navigation, to navigate, measure distances, ranging, communicate with or detect objects on or under the surface of the water, such as other vessels. Two types of technology share the name sonar, passive sonar is essentially listening for the sound made by vessels, active sonar is emitting pulses of sounds and listening for echoes. Sonar may be used as a means of acoustic location and of measurement of the echo characteristics of targets in the water. Acoustic location in air was used before the introduction of radar. Sonar may also be used for robot navigation, and sonar, an upward looking in air sonar, is used for atmospheric investigations. The term sonar is also used for the equipment used to generate and receive the sound. The acoustic frequencies used in sonar systems vary from very low, infrasonic, to extremely high, ultrasonic. The study of underwater sound is known as underwater acoustics or hydroacoustics. The first recorded use of the technique was by Leonardo da Vinci in 1490 who used a tube inserted into the water to detect vessels by ear. It was developed during World War I to counter the growing threat of submarine warfare, with an operational passive sonar system in use by 1918. Modern active sonar systems use an acoustic transducer to generate a sound wave that is reflected from target objects. History Although some animals, dolphins, bats, some shrews, and others, have used sound for communication and object detection for millions of years, used by humans in the water is initially recorded by Leonardo da Vinci in 1490, a tube inserted into the water was said to be used to detect vessels by placing an ear to the tube. In the late 19th century an underwater bell was used as an ancillary to lighthouses or lightships to provide warning of hazards. The use of sound to echolocate underwater in the same way as bats use sound for aerial navigation seems to have been prompted by the Titanic disaster of 1912. The world's first patent for an underwater echo ranging device was filed at the British Patent Office by English meteorologist Louis Fry Richardson a month after the sinking of Titanic and a German physicist Alexander Bem obtained a patent for an echo sounder in 1913. During World War I the need to detect submarines prompted more research into the use of sound. The British made early use of underwater listening devices called hydrophones, while the French physicist Paul Langevin, working with the Russian immigrant electrical engineer Konstantin Kilowski, worked on the development of active sound devices for detecting submarines in 1915. Although piezoelectric and magnetostrictive transducers later superseded the electrostatic transducers they used, this work influenced future designs. Lightweight sound-sensitive plastic film and fiber optics have been used for hydrophones, while terpenol-D and PMN, lead magnesium neobate, have been developed for projectors. Active sonar Active sonar uses a sound transmitter, or projector, and a receiver. When the two are in the same place it is a monostatic operation. When the transmitter and receiver are separated it is a bistatic operation. When more transmitters, or more receivers, are used, again spatially separated, it is multi-static operation. Most sonars are used monostatically with the same array often being used for transmission and reception. Active sonobuoy fields may be operated multi-statically. Active sonar creates a pulse of sound, often called a ping, and then listens for reflections, echo, of the pulse. This pulse of sound is generally created electronically using a sonar projector consisting of a signal generator, power amplifier, and electroacoustic transducer slash array. A transducer is a device that can transmit and receive acoustic signals, pings. A beam former is usually employed to concentrate the acoustic power into a beam, which may be swept to cover the required search angles. Generally, the electroacoustic transducers are of the Tonfilts type and their design may be optimized to achieve maximum efficiency over the widest bandwidth, in order to optimize the performance of the overall system. Occasionally, the acoustic pulse may be created by other means, 
e.g. chemically using explosives, air guns, or plasma sound sources. To measure the distance to an object, the time from transmission of a pulse to reception is measured and converted into a range using the known speed of sound. To measure the bearing, several hydrophones are used, and the set measures the relative arrival time to each, or with an array of hydrophones, by measuring the relative amplitude in beams formed through a process called beam forming. The use of an array reduces the spatial response so that to provide wide cover multi-beam systems are used. The target signal, if present, together with noise is then passed through various forms of signal processing, which for simple sonars may be just energy measurement. It is then presented to some form of decision device that calls the output either the required signal or noise. This decision device may be an operator with headphones or a display, or in more sophisticated sonars this function may be carried out by software. Further processes may be carried out to classify the target and localize it, as well as measuring its velocity. The pulse may be at constant frequency or a chirp of changing frequency, to allow pulse compression on reception. Simple sonars generally use the former with a filter wide enough to cover possible Doppler changes due to target movement, while more complex ones generally include the latter technique. Since digital processing became available pulse compression has usually been implemented using digital correlation techniques. Military sonars often have multiple beams to provide all-around cover while simple ones only cover a narrow arc, although the beam may be rotated, relatively slowly, by mechanical scanning. Project Artemis Project Artemis was an experimental research and development project in the late 1950s to mid-1960s to examine acoustic propagation and signal processing for a low-frequency active sonar system that might be used for ocean surveillance. A secondary objective was an examination of engineering problems of fixed active bottom systems. The receiving array was located on the slope of Plantagenet Bank off Bermuda. The active source array was deployed from the converted World War II tanker USNS mission Capistrano. Elements of Artemis were used experimentally after the main experiment was terminated. Identifying Sound Sources Passive sonar has a wide variety of techniques for identifying the source of a detected sound. For example, US vessels usually operate 60 Hz alternating current power systems. If transformers or generators are mounted without proper vibration insulation from the hull or become flooded, the 60 Hz sound from the windings can be emitted from the submarine or ship. This can help to identify its nationality as all European submarines and nearly every other nation's submarine have 50 Hz power systems. Intermittent sound sources, such as a wrench being dropped, called transients, may also be detectable to passive sonar. Passive sonar systems may have large sonic databases, but the sonar operator usually finally classifies the signals manually. A computer system frequently uses these databases to identify classes of ships, actions, i.e. the speed of a ship, or the type of weapon released, and even particular ships. Noise Limitations Passive sonar on vehicles is usually severely limited because of noise generated by the vehicle. For this reason, many submarines operate nuclear reactors that can be cooled without pumps, using silent convection, or fuel cells or batteries, which can also run silently. Vehicle's propellers are also designed and precisely machined to emit minimal noise. High-speed propellers often create tiny bubbles in the water, and this cavitation has a distinct sound. The sonar hydrophones may be towed behind the ship or submarine in order to reduce the effect of noise generated by the watercraft itself. Towed units also combat the thermocline, as the unit may be towed above or below the thermocline. The display of most passive sonars used to be a two-dimensional waterfall display. The horizontal direction of the display is bearing. The vertical is frequency, or sometimes time. Another display technique is to color code frequency time information for bearing. More recent displays are generated by the computers and mimic radar type plan position indicator displays. Target Characteristics the sound reflection characteristics of the target of active sonar, such as a submarine, are known as its target strength. 
A complication is that echoes are also obtained from other objects in the sea such as whales, wakes, schools of fish, and rocks. Passive sonar detects the target's radiated noise characteristics. The radiated spectrum comprises a continuous spectrum of noise with peaks at certain frequencies which can be used f. Thank you for being with us until the end of the program. Be sure to mention your opinions about the educational video in the comments section.